The Fordham Rams traveled up to West Point to face Army for the fifth time in school history on Saturday, but the Rams couldn't control the Army ground game as the Black Knights defeated Fordham 42-31. to Michael Morando got the Rams on the board first with a 40-yard field goal in the first quarter, his school record 42nd career three-pointer. Later in the first, the Rams mounted another scoring drive thanks to this 17-yard completion from Mike Niebrick to Dan Light. But the drive stalled on the Army 29 where Joe Pavlik went back to punt but threw a pass instead to the end zone with Mark DeSisto out jumping four defenders for the touchdown in a 10-0 Fordham lead early in the second. Army would score twice in the second to take a 14-10 halftime lead and then pick up one in the third and another early in the fourth for a 28-10 advantage. But the Rams used a 65-yard scoring strike from Niebrick to Brian Wetzel to make it a 28-17 game with 12.54 left. Another Army score made it a 35-17 contest, but three straight completions, the first to Adam Malkowitz, the second to Brian Wetzel, And the third, an eight-yard touchdown pass to Bucky Jones Jr. made it an 11-point game again with just over five minutes remaining. A Black Knight score with 2.55 on the clock gave Army a 42-24 lead before Malkowitz closed out the scoring when he grabbed the tip ball and took it to the end zone for a 51-yard touchdown play. I think, I think first and foremost, you have to give credit to Army. I think Coach Bucky and his staff did it. A uh, very good job putting the game plan together, and you know, obviously the triple option is something that's unique, and you don't have the opportunity to prepare for the entire season. So, uh, you know, they did a, an excellent job making adjustments in the second half, and, and came out and moved the ball pretty well. You know, I think, you know, we talked to our kids this week about uh, needing to do three things to be successful: being urgent, all right, having energy, and having precision. And I think, I think we were urgent. I think we gave great effort for four quarters, uh, and I don't think we were precise enough. You know, in, in the first half. The you know, defense played very well. We moved the ball between the 20s offensively, but had a turnover and, and didn't convert in the red zone. Uh, so that hurt us there. And then the second half, it's just a, it's a, you know, it was just the opposite. You know, we were, we were able to move the ball and score offensively. We weren't able to stop them on defense. So uh, proud of our kids' efforts, uh, collective effort. Uh, losing is never acceptable. So I told them uh, we're not in the business of moral victories. Uh, it should sting, uh, but it can only sting for about 12 hours. Um, and. You know, the, 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 what you ask the positive to take out of it is you know, to have the opportunity to play a team the week before the playoffs who's beaten three FBS teams and come close to Wake Forest and, you know, is a, is a very good football team. Hopefully the caliber of opponent will help prepare us for what we're going to see in the playoffs. You started things very strong, you know, to a 10-point lead off the fake punt. Yeah. What, what did you call it the fake punt? Um, it's something that we've worked on the entire season, and it's really a call for when you're in a position where you can't make the field goal because it's out of your range and you're too tight in to punt because you're really not going to gain anything if the thing goes into the end zone. So, you know, it's a call we made and, you know, the, the kids executed it well. It's essentially you, you want the defense to think it's a punt and you send your gunner, gunners down to go up and grab the ball and, you know, hopefully they don't see that it's not kicked. And actually the look they were in, they, they were in a safe look and weren't in a punt look. So that was actually the worst look possible to have it against. But we felt, you know, the... the you know, the yards we may have gained with a punt really wasn't going to garner us anything, uh, so we just said, we're going to give it a whirl. It seemed like the block punt right before the half really kind of shifted things. Was, was there a mood in the locker room that kind of was a little down? Yeah, there, there was a little bit of a tangible shift in momentum, and, and you could sense it from the guys from going up uh, and heading into the locker room, you know, ahead to, to you know, obviously a block punt's a big momentum shifter in any game, particularly one that's recovered for a touchdown. Uh, but, you know, we just tried to reinforce it. it was still a four-point game at that point. We were going to have our opportunities. But, um, you know, what we told them, we had one great special teams play that gave us a touchdown and, and one that, you know, gave up a touchdown. So it was a push at that point. Uh, so that one play certainly didn't uh, cost us the game. But uh, by the same token, it certainly didn't help because it did give them, uh, gave Army some momentum going into halftime. They continually uh, got short yardage gains on third and fourth down and really kind of kept drive alive. Was, do you think fatigue was a factor? Fatigue? Uh, at some uh, point? Uh, possibly, you know, it's, uh, you know, like I said, this offense, they call it the triple option for a reason, you know, because you have to have someone that's devoted to the dive, someone that's devoted to the quarterback, and someone that's devoted to the pitch. And, you know, there's, uh, you know, you have to commit to doing something during the week to defend it, which you don't do during the season. And obviously, 
you know, uh, they ran the quarterback sneak very successfully. You know, they, they ran very well with Dixon on, on the dives and things like that. And our kids fought and they tried hard. And, you know, that, that, that's part of the, you know, the thing with you know, the FCS level having, you know, 60 scholarships as opposed to, you know, full complement, the depth thing. But that's not an excuse. I mean, that's fact. So, uh, we, um, you know, they did a good job. You know, I tip my hat to them. And, you know, they, they did a great job converting third and fourth and shorts. And we needed to get off the field. And, and that's certainly something we could take away and learn from. They, they didn't have the off the ball a lot, but the offense did score quickly when it had the ball. Yeah. Were you happy with the way the, those drives went? I was happy with the way we moved the ball between the 20s in the first half, and I wasn't happy with the way we capitalized in the red zone, you know, with, with the penalty and the turnover. Uh, you know, I think we had 219 yards and a half, if I'm not mistaken. You, know, you should have more than 10 points off of that. But we ran four plays in the third quarter. Uh, which you know, you, you know, that was one series, right? and then we got it, got it rolling a little bit in the uh, in the fourth, and, and, uh, and it would have just been nice to have that productivity offensively in both halves. It was because we certainly moved the ball in that regard, but we just didn't, you know, we weren't able to punch it in, which we needed to do against a great opponent like Army. What do you, uh, I guess, say to the guys just to get them back up again? You know, you got a got a big playoff yeah. you say anything to the team to? No. Uh, we, yeah, we just talked about it now. I said losing should sting, it should hurt, because we haven't lost much around here and it's not acceptable. But by the same token, I'm giving them about 12 hours to hang their head. You know, we talk about our preseason goals and, and what we've accomplished throughout the season. And I told them no, nowhere in that list of goals did I say being an FBS team is one of our goals. So uh, we played, you know, fairly well against a good opponent. Uh, and I said, you know, we're going to come in tomorrow uh, at 11 o'clock for the selection show, and now we've got to press forward and. and you know, work to achieve the goal that's still outstanding, and that's the national championship. We talk about three more feet. All right, this is when three more feet kicks in. What are we going to do for the next, whatever, four or five games, depending on whether we get a bye, you know, to earn a right to, to be a, a championship-level team and, and, you know, complete our last season's goal. So, you know, you know certainly the lost things. Certainly we're not happy with it, but, uh, you know, we'll learn from it, get better. And, and like I said, it's, it's a great opportunity to play a quality opponent for, for the type of play, teams that we're going to see. Uh, moving forward in the playoffs. I know it may be difficult now because you don't know your opponent, but um, are you getting ready for the FCS or is it just basically just going into the selection, you know, watching the selection show tomorrow? And, uh... Generally we'll have a pretty good inkling prior to the show, um, but the difficult thing with that is that there's, there's a lot of moving parts. There's games going on today, there's seedings that are going to change, so uh, we just kind of have to wait and see. Uh, and then and we find out our opponent, make a film exchange, and, and get to work, and you know, have a great Sunday practice based on the film that's available. And take Monday, put our game plan together, and, and then go out and practice thir Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And uh, you know, hopefully, we're fortunate enough to play at home uh, like we were last year. But uh, you know, at this point, there's only 24 teams left, so it's you know, you talk about the selection process or the draw. You know, anyone you get at this point in the state, at this stage in the game. You know, it's going to be a quality opponent. So, you know, our kids are ready, and the great thing is we've been here before. You know, we've been down this road last year, and so now we not only know the things it takes to get here, uh, we know the things that uh, it's going to take to, to move ahead of where we went last year.